Okay, welcome everybody uh, to this uh, online seminar on quantum aspects of space, time and matter. Today we have the uh, great pleasure to welcome Tadashi Takayanaki uh, for our online seminar. So Tadashi is uh, most known for his holographic um, interpretation of the in, uh, entanglement entropy and uh, subsequently also worked on other information concepts in the context uh, of holography. Um, let me give some background on uh, Tadashi's uh, um, 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 background. So um, Tadashi graduated from the University of Tokyo and then after um, uh, postdoc positions in Harvard and uh, California, then became professor in Kyoto, where he is uh, calling today. So today, uh, Tadashi will talk about uh, recent focuses of ADS uh, boundary CFT, and we are uh, happy to have you here. So please, Tadashi, take it away. Yeah. Thank you very much for introduction. And I'm very happy to uh, give a talk here. And uh, yes, here I'd like to mainly talk about uh, uh, holography between boundary conformal field theory, BCFT. I will explain this later. But this means that the conformal field theory, which lives on a manifold with boundary. It, it, the point is that we have a boundary, e even for CFT. Of course, anti space is a boundary. But the, but the ADS anti space is dual to conformal field theory on compact manifold usually. But uh, we put some boundary for, for manifold where we define CFT. So that case, we need an extra boundary in anti space. That's the, the point of this ADS PCFT correspondence. And I'd like to give some updates of this correspondence also, in, uh, especially the, from the viewpoint of uh, so called entanglement, which I think you, you have heard about it in. in some of the other talks, I think, of this entanglement wedges, and also recent connection to island, which is related to the black hole information paradox. Okay, and uh, so these are contents of my talks. I will give some detailed introduction to explain the intuitive understanding of this ADSP CFT, and I'd like to give some connection expression. Uh, explain the basic connection between ADS BCFT correspondence and holographic entanglement entropy circuit. And these are quite old based on old works, but I would like to give some brief review for this. And then go to uh, more modern topics, namely entanglement wedges. And the uh, one goal of this talk is to understand the entanglement wedge in ADS BCFT. And this is directly related to this island ideas. And uh, but before that I'd like to explain how we can understand the entanglement wedge from CFT calculations. These are basic reference, which I have before. And then go to Ireland from uh, ADS BCFT, and finally end up with our recent work about co-dimension to holography. These are based on the work with Ibrahim Akar and Yuya Kusuki, and Disha Wei and myself. Okay, let me start. So let me give you the introduction. And the, in this talk, I'm quite interested in the ADS safety correspondence. It's a basic uh, principle. And of course, we know ADS safety correspondence uh, very much. And I think you had uh, many talks about ADS safety before. But the, st the problem is that we still don't understand its basic uh, reason why ADS safety works so well. Right? We don't know basic mechanism. We can say that is a holography, but it's a very intuitive idea. And there are no pre a precise proof for ADS safety. And uh, so we need to understand why this is true. And especially that's related to the essence of you know, gravity, how space time in gravity emerges from quantum field theory or conformal field theory. Okay. To understand this is to ask the foreign question. So, which region in CFT is dual to which region in anti Doshita space? Right? So, it's some region, sub regions. So this is called also sub region, sub region dual. It's some region in ADS correspond to some region in CFT. And on sub region dualities. And the most common one is this entanglement, which I will explain also. Just next 
slides and enter them into H, which means that some information included in some region correspond to information included in another subregion in gravity. So this is a duality between reduced density matrix, basically. Density matrix is a, captures the quantum information, right? information of the quantum system and just corresponds yes, between density matrix. I think we lost Tadashi. This connection was a bit unstable. So let's see if he reconnects. Hello, Tadashi. Can, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Sorry, somehow internet. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Very funny. Uh, can you see this now? Yes, we can see it. Uh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Somehow some problem happened. So let me check. Yeah. So what? It's done. Okay. Let me. Cool. So the main aim to understand this ADSB safety, and I will. So this is about holonic duality of manifold with boundaries. Okay. So. So the here is about. Uh, let me first start with the entanglement wedges, and the entanglement wedge is uh, uh, based on the idea of uh, calculation of entanglement entropy in ADSFT, is namely holographic entanglement entropy. And uh, so we can define entanglement entropy in CFT like this way. So this is the definition, right? We talk about density matrix of total Hilbert space, and we de decompose Hilbert space into A, and we take some time slice, and we decompose space into A and B, and then Hilbert space is factorized into HA and HB, and we trace out region B, right? And then we can define some density matrix for A, right? Reduce density matrix for A, and we uh, take a take a, a von Neumann entropy, low, 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 and this defines the entropy for A, right? And uh, so this is, a, I mean, very usual definition of entanglement entropy, and there are many, many marks for this calculation in field theory. But the question is how do we can calculate in ADS CFT? And the answer is very simple, it's just given by this geometric formula. So this is the ADS CFT. We have a conformal field theory here, and the anti Doshita space is one dimension higher, this holography. And then we just extend this boundary of A. The point is that if we fix this boundary, we can separate space into A and B. And this is a definition of entanglement entropy. And to define entanglement, we need to specify this boundary. And we extend this boundary towards the bulk, right? And then this is Extension is a, there are infinitely many different ways, but we especially pick up minimum area one, which is we just write it gamma A. So we take a sum of surface gamma A, which end on the boundary way, and we minimize. But the more precise, you have to first extremalize because some, we are interested in general, we are interested in time dependent background, low range and time. And that case, we, if we go narrow direction, right to right direction, area occurs vanishes. So because of that, to avoid this problem, we want to. Uh, talk about the uh, subtle point of area functional. And so we extremalize it. And if there are, and in general, to solve, after solving this partial differential equation to minimize, uh, to extern, extremalize area, then we have uh, some discrete number of solutions and we pick up minimum area one. So this is uh, basically this formula. This is a, a, a formula which I find with Veronica Hubeni and Lukundu Ramani. But if we particular focus on constant time slice, if we took a constant time background, a static background, then uh, we can just omit this e extremalization and just re restrict to everything to time slice. This is a, a basic simplest formula, which I worked with Shinseiru. Anyway, that way we can calculate entanglement entropy. But this actually, this 
borders is gamma a, and we calculated the area, but this is this meaning of this gamma a is more than this, more than entanglement. And, but before that, I'd like to uh, just also mention some of our recent uh, progress of this kind of calculation. So this formula is true for time, real, real time dependent background. It's a covariant entanglement. But if you thought about uh, time dependent, but Euclidean time dependent background, this is actually uh, worked out quite recently with Nakata and Taki and Tamaoka and way. And this is something what we call, actually, so we, we just talk about some time, uh, Euclidean time dependent anti Doshita space. So you can imagine this kind of inner product, right? You can talk of final state and in, in, initial state, psi and buffer, and take an inner product. In that case, you encounter, because these two states are in general different, so you encounter some time dependent uh, background. For example, simplest one is somehow, for example, uh, you can take uh, some Jena solution, which describes some you know, interface. And that case, also we can have this kind of time, the Euclidean time dependent background, and what some tunneling effect, tunneling amplitude. And then, anyway, so what we do is just minimize area, right? We can try to find minimum area surface. This is always co dimension two, right? If we total dimension d plus one, then this is d minus one dimensional surface. And this is non trivial, right? That, that there are no simple time slice. In that case, we have to. Uh, this surface is a bit, uh, I mean, not on the simple time slice. It's just a kind of real a minimal surface. And uh, this is everything is Euclidean. We can minimize area. So in this case, we just need minimize area. But then question is that of what this corres quantity corresponds to. But uh, we can find actually answer that is actually given by some generalization of entanglement. Entry. This is no longer entanglement. Entry. So this is a, looks similar, right? But uh, this formula is low, 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 like von Neumann, like. Uh, uh, looking, but this tau is not a density matrix. Tau depends on point is that two different states, initial state and the final state, and actually given by a transition matrix. We trace out you know, some sub complement of A or B, something which we call also B here. And uh, so we trace out the other part, and uh, then what we get a reduced transition matrix. And this and take a low log low, like the tau log low, tau, so tau log tau. This is uh, actually definition of this quantity and which we call pseudo entropy. But this quantity, we have to be careful in general, this is no longer a real value, a positive value, because this function, uh, this matrix, transition matrix, no longer Hamishan. But unfortunately, for this Euclidean pass integral with real value, the external source, or this holographic calculation, always we find some positive real value for entropy. And uh, this is, anyway, so. This is a kind of generalization, but I, today I not the main talk, talk, a main part of this talk is not related to this one, more uh, standard entanglement entropy. And we'd like to discuss this border, which is called entanglement wedge. Maybe let, let me uh, shortly ask a, a question. So yeah. like, um, the, the, this is based on like a bipartition of the Hilbert space, which uh, yeah. on the uh, quantum field theory side is, is problematic. So can you comment if there is some focus and understanding on the quantum field theory side, what um, uh -huh. okay, okay. Um, Yeah, or? so of course, in, first of all, uh, to precisely define some this kind of factorization, one, one way to do this is to discretize the uh, field theory into lattices. So that's, we can, for example, for fermion theory or bosonic theory, scalar theory, we can do this. And we can discretize and cal calculate this entanglement entropy. And this is one approach. But if we talk about the gauge theory, right, then we have to be careful because uh, in gauge theory, this links and uh, I mean, the sites and the links are both have some meaning. We cannot cut into just into two parts because of the presence of Gauss law constraint. It is there are non linear as a, a, a non local constraint. That means there are no total charge. And because of that, actually, this factorization of Hilbert space is very subtle. And especially for gauge theory, there are many works on this. And in that case, we have to decompose Hilbert space into super selection sectors, namely counting basically like a flux, a value of flux, some kind of instant on like sectors. And each sector we can decompose Hilbert into two parts. And in that sense, total Hilbert space is not simply HA times HV. That, that, that's uh, of course a very important point, but uh, somehow we can we know one answer for this. We can always do the calculation by using quantum field theory and uh, by using the replicatory. We can talk about the replica manifold, and I'm not talking about this, but we can talk about some calculation, and that gives some definite answer. 
And also area safety, like computed this way, just area, it also gives a unique answer. And the replica calculation and this uh, holographic calculation agrees. That's what we know. And the next question, what this replica calculation means, and that's precisely particular choice of uh, this kind of managing uh, super selection sectors. I'm not going to details, but uh, we know one answer, but there are other definitions of entanglement entropy. And then that has another interesting interpretation, especially, for example, from the viewpoint of quantum information theory, we talk about something called LOCC and so on, right? So some operational uh, extraction, distillation of entanglement, and that gives some different terms. And that way, there, there are, I, I mean, many different approaches to entanglement entropy. And so that sense, I mean, there are ambiguity to define entanglement entropy. And, uh, but anyway, one of them uh, has a nice agreement with the program. Okay. And also, there are other more, more very mathematical uh, approach that is called algebraic quantum field theory. But anyway, entanglement is UV divergent quantity. And uh, this is not, not so well defined in mathematical sense. And that sense, we instead look at other quantity, but related to entanglement is namely called the relative entropy. And then we subtract divergence, we can somehow manage. Mathematically rigorous set. Is this okay? Mm. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So, but yeah, sorry. In my talk, uh, this I just keep this kind of thing is a bit, uh, in some sense, careless way. And but uh, because in holographic calculation, we know just single answer and we know how it's related to uh, quantum field set. And just I uh, stick to that calculation. Okay. And then. Okay, so then we talk about, uh, we'd like to talk about entanglement ways, right? So we talked about this minimal area surface, right? But uh, this, of course, this is, we can, if we calculate this area, then we can calculate entanglement entropy. But there, this has a more meaning, more, more, much more deep meaning. That is actually entanglement ways. And uh, this is actually gives the answer to the following basic question that if we, this is area safety, this is a boundary is safety, and uh, this is surface is some minimal surface. But uh, we have a bulk region, ADS region inside. And uh, the question is that if we restrict the particular information which localizes on the boundary region A, in some sense, it's, this is related to row A, reduced density matrix. This reduced density matrix corresponds to some information of the bulk, but actually, so what part of information? But there are simple answer to this question. That is precisely this region, bulk region called MA. And this MA is uh, called entanglement weight. Right, this is the MA, the region which is surrounded by A and this minimal surface. And there are many uh, works in this direction. And I will give one a clear derivation just by just based on CFT calculation later. And but this is actually not doesn't look like weight. And more precisely, we need to add time direction. This is a time slice. We need time direction, and then it's really weight. Right. So we have some subsystem A, and this is a minimal surface. And we talk about the domain of dependence of this surface. And, uh, sorry, domain of dependence of this uh, MA, this sana sandwich to area. And this is this purple region. This is exactly what people call uh, entanglement wedge. This looks like really wedge. But I, my talk, I'm not, this time direction doesn't play so much important role. So I just squashed, right, project everything down to time slice, then we get this picture. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, but the characteristic feature of entanglement wedge is a phase transition, right? So we talk about region A and region B, but we talk about the union of A and B. A and B are disjoint region, and we talk about disjoint union. And then if A and B are far apart, then if we calculate an entanglement entropy, just uh, SA, we calculate entanglement entropy for SAB, then this is just also disconnected. Minimal surface is disconnected. And we can talk about this connected one, but this is, has a larger area. This is not favor. And accordingly, entanglement wedge or row A or of row A B is disconnected. But if row A are, if A and B are gets larger, right, like this, and uh, that case, so this minimal surface connects much in a shorter path, right? And this is a favor. This guy is a favor, which is called gamma A B. And then entanglement wedge is connected. And that way, there are kind of phase transition of, of the, uh, I mean, even topology of uh, entanglement wedge by changing some continuous parameter, right? Namely, size of A in this. In this case, we have zero vanishing mutual information. And mutual information is SA plus SB minus SB. And, uh, but this is non zero because there are connections here, basically. 
Okay. Of course, if you have any question, just uh, ask me anytime. So this is a, a quite a standard story of this entanglement wedge. And now I go to ages Just here, just please forget about the entanglement. Let's just go back to original ADS safety. It's kind of just kind of generalization of ADS safety. But uh, what about, what is a BCFT? This is just, a, uh, this means boundary conformal theory. And for a special choice of boundary condition, a part of conformal symmetries are preserved. And this is called boundary conformal theory. And uh, so if we talk, we talk about CFE, and then boundary conformal field theory is SO2 comma D minus one. It's slightly smaller, right? Subgroup of this full conformal field theory group. This is the same as conformal group for D, D dimension. This is a D plus one dimension, but D, D dimension. And this is realized when you have some bulk conformal field theory and end on some boundary. Right, and the point is that the boundary have a label, right? There are many different boundary conditions. That correspondingly, we just call some boundary number one, number two, and so on. And this is an alpha is a label. And uh, so the bulk CFT preserve this full symmetry, but because of the presence of boundary, it's only preserved, only subgroup is preserved. This is a boundary conformal theory. And the generic boundary condition, of course, breaks all of this conformal symmetry. But the very nice one called boundary conformal theory is uh, preserved, in some sense, maximum subgroup. And uh, so this, uh, we call this also, we can sometimes regard this as a time direction, is a vertical direction is time direction. Then this is, this defines a state. We, we have a state and time evolution. In that case, we write this state called boundary state, B alpha. And what, especially in one plus one dimension, this is called Bacardi state, and it uh, satisfies this Vila Soro condition. Linear combination, Vila uh, Soro generator annihilate this boundary. And if we calculate any point of function here, Right? And this go up a half plane, then this is equivalent to the inserting vacuum and also one uh, boundary state on sphere. So we can uh, compare map to boundary to just hole, right? And this hole is just described by putting some vertex operator, which is precise. This vertex operator is the same as boundary states. Okay. So this is a, a BCFT. So now, but I'd like to just, this is a brief summary of ADS B theory. I'll come back more detail later, but here just uh, uh, quickly would like to introduce. So the idea of ADS B CFT is like this. So we extend the ADS CFT. So we talk about some region A, right, with boundary. So point is that we have a boundary, right? Normally we have uh, this kind of Poincare ADS dual to this you know, non compact frame, right? But it's, I'm talking about some disk, right? ADS. As a CFT lives on a disk. This uh, this uh, thick line, a thick curve is a uh, boundary, so boundary of A, right? And the idea is to construct gravity dual, is just extend this boundary towards the bulk, like this. And this surface is very important. It's called, I write it always Q, this red surface is an extension boundary. And this is, nowadays it's called end of the world brain, end of the world brain, in the context of also appears. In Ireland or so on. And the point is that along this surface Q, we impose Neumann boundary condition, like this, given by this. K is an extrinsic curvature. I'll come back to this later. But anyway, so just remember this is a Neumann boundary condition. But if we talk about this an original boundary A, ADS, asymptotically ADS boundary, we always impose Dirichlet boundary condition. This is usual in ADS CFT. And the Neumann is not, not usual. But here, point is that this Neumann boundary condition arises on this. Brain. And this brain is much like Randall Sandland brain. Actually, in some sense, it's very same, exactly the same one, but it uses different purpose. And uh, the reason why we impose uh, Neumann boundary condition is uh, we want to keep boundary. This is a boundary, it's a dynamical boundary, so we want to keep boundary dynamical. If we impose the initial boundary, we have a problem, right? We don't know, we, we don't know good, we don't have any good candidate metric here. Right, we just talk about fluctuating metric, but we just impose simple Neumann boundary condition. This is much simpler and much uh, reasonable. And but also at the same time, we can embed this configuration in string theory. And uh, you know this orange fold. If we talk about orange fold, this is, Q can be just identified with orange fold in particular case. And orange fold is protected by symmetry, G2 symmetry. And this symmetry is uh, just setting this KB to be zero. In that sense, this energy storage sensor localized on Q is zero. 
and we just get like this simple equation. And if we put some D-brain more, then we can we get some extra contribution of energy stress. So this is a, a simple uh, uh, sketch of energy stress. I will come back to this later, more details. But uh, here I explained two different, uh, this one, uh, uh, sorry, maybe this one, entanglement of H and the uh, AGSBCFT, right? And the picture is very similar, and the idea is very same because we extend this boundary towards the back. But these two guys are completely different. This is first I'd like to emphasize, and here uh, uh, it's a more highlighted this difference. So we, this is the first one, the entanglement ways. And the point is that this gamma A, the surface is extremal surface, extremal. That means more geometrically, it just means trace of extrinsic curvature is vanishing. This is a minimal surface, or, uh, or just uh, we take a subtle point of area function. This trace part is only is there. That means this is always we can find such a surface in any background if we fix boundary of A. So that means we don't need a back reaction. But in ADS BCFT, this is a really, we restrict everything to this region, this region. And uh, physically, there are no nothing outside. But this entanglement of edge case, just, uh, I mean, just we imagine that we pick up information A, but actually there are information outside. There are physical theory outside. But here it's we eliminate completely outside region and just talk about physical theory, quantum field theory, conform field theory lives on the bound, lives on A with boundary. So that case, this is a really physically we cut, that means we have to physically impose this boundary condition Q, and the Q is a very strong condition, right? Full component of KAB, extrinsic curvature is fixed. That means this is no longer true in generic background. That means we have to back react, right, geometry. So if this condition is not uh, met for, for example, pure ideas case, we have to take into account back reaction. And uh, this is quite natural because Q is brain, right? You know, if we have a D brain, if we have a D brain, then gravitational background changes, right? Because of the back reaction of D brains. This is how also area space time emerges from these three brains. And uh, so surface Q back yes. These two guys are different. But nevertheless, these two have a very important connection. That's uh, the main part of this talk. So this is a, a brief introduction of this, my uh, basically I just finished the introduction and go to more details. So if you have any question, please ask. Is this part is clear? So uh, let me ask, can gamma A and Q be the same, but have different uh, co constraints? Uh? Yeah, 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 different constraints. Yeah, and uh, this is not exactly the same also. And uh, yeah, if we talk about very simple background like ADS3, pure ADS background, and especially take this surface A, uh, this uh, A to be round sphere, then these two guys are same, round sphere. Mm -hmm. But if we talk about more elliptic or more generic shape, gamma A always just exists, and a little bit distorted surface, but always exists for pure ADS. But, uh, for this Q case, this uh, ADS BCFT case, if we choose generic shape of A, then there are no surface which satisfy this condition, which end on this uh, kind of complicated surface. And then uh, we have to back react to geometry, and then metric changes, and then we find some solution to this one. So this is a difference. But simple case, it, it looks in this very similar. Okay. Uh, hi, Tadashi. Ah, hi. I'm, I'm postdoc with Pavel, so I have uh, a question, which is ah, that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, um, can you hear me? Hi. Uh, sorry, I, I cannot hear you somehow. Uh, now is it okay? Yeah. Okay, so my question is that um, for the second case in BCFT, does the Neumann boundary condition completely? Okay, yeah. Does the Neumann boundary condition completely? Sorry. Guess we need to wait a moment again. 
Um, okay, let's wait for a minute. Ah, sorry, could you repeat the question? Sorry, my connection was again. Yes, yeah, sorry, we lost uh, you. Now I changed the different, uh, different, I just now try different internet connection. So pro, I hope okay, it's so, right. So my question is that uh, for the PCFT case, does the Neumann boundary condition completely fixed that um, the brain or the boundary is conformal in, like it's, it is conformal boundary in the bulk? Yeah, yeah, okay, good question, yeah. Uh, actually, so if we especially look at this one, maybe I, yeah, actually that will come back later, actually. So this one. So if we fix, if we particularly, uh, okay, let me use this laser pointer. So if we particularly focus on this one, that means this energy stress tensor is proportional to HAB, just induced matrix on B, and it's much like a cosmological constant. And if we, this equation motion, Neumann boundary condition looks like this, this case, uh, conformal invariance is preserved. Okay, do, do you have a more intuitive way to see why this is a conformal mm. boundary in, in the bulk side? Uh -huh. Yeah, in that case, we can show some exact express solution, obviously preserve uh, lower dimensional conformal symmetry. So we, we know that this is an ADS space, right? ADS D plus one dimension, right? ADS D plus one dimension. And we take some slice, ADS slice in lower dimensional ADS. And then that, obviously this has a SO2 comma D minus one symmetry. And that way, and this setting, so we can talk about some boundary here, right? Surface Q is here. Uh -huh. It just take a constant law and then calculate this KAB, it's always proportional to HAB. Okay, I see. And so we have to always impose this kind of condition. KV is proportional to HAB. This is much like a vacuum Einstein equation, right? You can regard this as a kind of rich curvature. Then always proportional. This is much like a cosmological constant. Huh? I see. So the claim mm -hmm. is that if in, in ADS, if this KAB is proportional to the induced metric on the, mm -hmm. on the, on the hypersurface, then this hypersurface is and ADS2 uh, and ADS uh, hyperplane. Is this claim correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Suppose, yeah, in this case, that's right. Okay. And uh, yeah, so, okay. And uh, uh, any other question? Okay. So, let me go a uh, more detail about ADS PCFT. And uh, so the action which we have in mind is like here. So this gravity action, we have uh, some bulk term, right? R is a rich curvature and a rich scalar and the cosmological constant, some matter field sometimes. And uh, given the given time term and uh, some localized matter, right, on this bread. And uh, so we talk about the surface Q, right? And the induced matrix we call the HAB. And uh, we define extreme curvature as usual. And we just basically, we talk about normal vector. Point is that always we have a normal vector on this Q. And uh, we talk about its covariant derivative and, uh, and trace is K. And if we particularly choose some Gaussian normal coordinate, it's diagonalized this way, we can always locally take such a coordinate system, rho and x. And that case, x is curvature is just derivative of this guy, right? About no, very simple. And anyway, so that point is that, important point is that we take a variation of this action, like always that is how taking variation and impose variation is zero is always a way to fix boundary condition. And we do this, right? We do this and this is a variation and uh, it turns out to be this one. And this KAB is extreme curvature again, and this is a metric variation. 
And this kind of equation motion appears, boundary equation motion. This is kind of boundary analog of Einstein equation. And there are two conditions, this first line zero or second line zero. And if second line zero, this is just Dirichlet boundary condition, just metric is fixed. But we prefer to uh, use using the first one, vanishing condition of first one. This is KAB and AKJB minus TQAB. This is just the boundary energy stress tensor. I just take a deriv derivative of this action by boundary metric. And this is a boundary Einstein equation. And we impose this. And this is a boundary, Neumann boundary condition. And we impose this because we want to keep boundary dynamical. And new data at Q, metric data should not be required. And this is also motivated by orange fold in string theory as a particular example. And uh, okay, and then we talk about our uh, express example already did we mention, but a simplest example, we just take uh, this TQAB energy stress sensor, boundary energy stress sensor is proportional to metric. And we just call this coefficient minus T. T is actually tension of this brain. This is tension brain because uh, this energy stress appears from this action. And this is a normal uh, bulk term with cosmological constant and given Hawking term and minus tension, this is a tension. If we regard this Q as a dynamical, tension, a dynamical brain, this is a brain tension. In that case, equation of motion, a Neumann boundary equation looks like this. And we can easily solve this by taking trace. And then we have just KB is proportional to HAB and uh, co D over D minus one times tension, tension appears. So tension is the most important parameter, which so yeah, we have in CFT. Okay, so this con now we have we want to present some ex expressed example for this, and here is the example. This is the most basic example because we can construct this from just pure ADS. This is a familiar Poincaré ADS d plus one, and we can relate this d plus one dimensional ADS into something called my well, hyperbolic slice or ADS slice, right? ADS slice. So rho is a new extra coordinate, like this way, angle coordinate. Rho equal minus infinity is here, and the gradually changing, and the rho is plus infinity is here, right? The rho equal zero is just vertical, and like go, going this way. But we somehow stop at rho equal rho star. And we call this a surface Q. And uh, so that means rho is right, restricted to this range. If we rho star goes to infinity, just this is a normal Poincaré Poincaré radius. But we just terminate at rho equal rho star. And rho star, at rho star, we have an extreme curvature, which is proportional to HAB and coefficient tangent hyperbolic. And from that, compare this with previous boundary condition tension is fixed. In other words, or if we fix tension, then rho star, value of rho star fixed by this equation. So this is how we can find some simplest example. And this is cases, obviously, we have a lower dimensional conformal symmetry on this because this is slides preserve this symmetry. But the full one is obviously broken because we terminate at the low equal loss. And uh, so we can also write this coordinate of this slice is just a lower dimensional ADS. Again, we can rely to in terms of Poincare uh, coordinate. Now Y is an extra dimension and T is same and W is also same. Here is extra dimension Z. Right? And the uh, x is uh, this horizontal direction. And x and z, so x and z is related to y and rho through this equation, through this equation. OK. And then we come to uh, holographic entanglement entropy in this ADS BCFT. This appears in my talking many times. And uh, so again, we expect something like this formula. So this is a minimum and extrema. This is a just covariant entanglement entropy, but we have to, we, we need a one extra in ingredient. This ingredient is obviously uh, necessary and we we find this in quite early, uh, so maybe roughly 10 years ago. And this is, once we put this extra ingredient, we can explain all known results about BCFT entanglement entropy. But actually after, this roughly nine years or 10 years, this actually, this extra ingredient is now understood as an island. So the, here is a uh, sketch. So we have uh, some uh, ADS space time like this, uh, D plus one dimensional ADS space time. We have some manifold M where we have boundary conformal So we are talking about the boundary conformal theory lives on M and we have a boundary, right? 
you have a boundary. This is a BCFT. And we, part, we pick a particular region, A, right? And we are interested in entanglement entropy for this region, A. And already there are many, many works also. Condensed matter people also works many, some form. There are many works for this calculation without holography also. But with holography, we can actually talk about minimal surface which end on A. Like maybe you might wonder this kind of surface, right? But actually, there are one more possibility. This, 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 this is also one candidate, right? Just kind of you know, minimal surface which just end on B, A. But there are extra surface called Q, right? This is we introduce here, right? This Q. Yeah. And this is actually plays very important law. And this is Neumann because we put Neumann boundary condition. And this here it's a delicious, it's completely different. And this is or it is called end, end of the world brain. And in that case, we can end uh, extreme surface on this manifold also. This is this creates some new region called B, which I write B. So you can choose any shape of B. And we can end extreme surface here. And uh, actually, to calculate the entanglement, we, we impose so called homology constraint that the size, the minimal surface gamma A is homologous to region A. So, and uh, this is quite important, especially in eternal black hole. In that case, we have a two different paths which pass through the horizon or don't pass through the horizon, and we should choose correct one. But here, of course, one we might think that this is some topologically non trivial, right? This We have extra surface, extra region B, and this doesn't look like homologous to A. That's right, but actually, the homology rule here is we regard this surface Q as a just trivial. And it's squeezed to zero size. This Q is not topologically trivial, a non trivial. This is because we impose a Neumann boundary condition. I will come back to this later, but because of Neumann boundary, condition, there are dynamical gravity here. And you can use holography again, and then it goes down one dimension, right? So this gravity in this dimension is dual to just non gravitational theory lives on this red line. And we can squeeze this space time to zero size. And topology that don't important and it's not important. So that way we can have this kind of contribution also. And so in, the, in other words, this extremal surface can end on Q. This is quite important in this calculation. And so simple upshot. So uh, here is just uh, I will also come up with this later, but not, uh, probably you have heard several talk about island formula. And this is related to black hole information paradox. And that case, how this is, my story is related here. So you, this is a, a basic uh, island formula, right? We have talk, so we talk, the idea is just to talk about conformal field theory coupled to gravity, right? And that this is a conformal field theory, and we have a gravity here. And that case, um, so we calculate entanglement entropy in CFT, just only CFT Hilbert space, but that case, because it's coupled to gravity, we can assume some extra region called island and just calculate the entanglement entropy, including both of the both of them. This is a region. The IS is a, a an island region, or in this case it's just B. B is B equal IS. Yeah. And uh, this this is a bulk entanglement. And we have also area because this is a gravity and we have a gravitational entropy, namely black hole, like black hole entropy. This is an area area uh, contribution. But in this ADS BCFT picture, this is also exactly the same structure. So if we talk about, so this is a minimal surface, we just uh, get a simple single contribution, but we can decompose into two parts, right? So some region very close to the region M, just basically you can cut out in the vertical line here. And uh, this region, blue region, is correspond to this bulk term. And if we talk about this brown region, just uh, uh, gravity part, brain world gravity contribution, just first term. So that way we can naturally have a correspondence between this uh, and holographic entanglement entropy in ADS BCFT and island formula. Okay, but anyway, I will come back to this later. So just forget about it and just go back to ADS BCFT itself. And here, and the important quantity is boundary entropy. So this is a very famous quantity in the presence of boundary. And I'm talking of two dimensional conformal field theory with boundary. A boundary is one dimension, like this before. And, uh, and in that case, we have some boundary states, which is satisfied this I explained. And the boundary entropy is a measure of degree of freedom at the boundary, first introduced by Fleck and Ludwig. And I will explain definition of this. 
And but therefore, this quantity is very nice property. It's called G theorem. Into this boundary entropy decreases under the RG flow, much like the homology of the C theorem. This is proven by Frieda and colleagues. And so here is a definition of boundary entropy. And of course, it's this is originally called entropy. So, but the, at that point, it's not so clear what kind of entropy does it mean. Actually, we can interpret this as an entanglement. And they. It's not just log of microstates, uh, number of microstates, actually. So it's like log of some uh, disk amplitude, which we talk about here. So actually, the boundary entropy, is, uh, we call it S boundary, it depends on the boundary condition alpha, it's just log of some quantity, and this quantity is just disk amplitude with boundary condition, right? Dep these are the depend on boundary condition, just this. But of course, we have to worry because disk amplitude has a lot of normalization ambiguity, and this ambiguity is fixed by thinking about the cylinder amplitude, like this. Right? This is a, a boundary state, and we talk about the cylinder amplitude, right? and the length is L, distance is L, large L, and the Hamiltonian here, right? propagation. This is a closed string viewpoint, but uh, uh, we can rewrite this in terms of open string viewpoint, right? and this trace of this Hilbert space. And these two, these two descriptions should be equivalent, give the same answer. This is called Cardi condition, open closed duality. And that fixes completely the normalization. And if we take L to be very large, then essentially you can talk about this is, length is quite long. So only ground state propagates. So that way we can factorize into this amplitude, this amplitude, and some ground state propagation like this way. And we can extract value of this disk amplitude, and this is a, and we take a log, this is a definition, original Afroic Rudolph's definition of boundary entropy. But after that, we uh, more recently, by first of all, by Calabres and Cardi, we have another interpretation of this quantity, especially uh, through the uh, idea of entanglement entropy. So if we calculate entanglement entropy in BCFT, and we have a boundary here, and we take a, this, we think this is a time direction, a vertical direction is time direction and decomposing into Hilbert space A and B. And if subsystem A is a size L, small L, then we, we have a, always this familiar logarithmic contribution, C over six, because usually C over three because it's like an interval in the middle, but because it's an end on the boundary, so it's much like half of the doubled version, right? We have mirror points and we talk about this length and we take a half. But there are extra contribution. This is the extra contribution which come from boundary is precisely identified as boundary entropy. And this is a and there are in this way there are three different ways to understand uh, boundary entropy that I will uh, confirm in our holographic calculation. So let's try first one. This temperature. So this is a holographic dual of this is uh, can be found by transformation. So we know this answer. Right? We know the upper half plane. Right? A half, a holographic dual of upper half plane is just this region, this wedge region. And we can take a uh, familiar conformal map to upper half plane to disk. Right? And this, this is a holographic counterpart. We have extra dimension Z. This is a well-known you know, conformal map, right? special conformal transformation, which maps right, upper half plane into disk. But we have a, a holographic bulk extension of this. And then this is just line that this angle is fixed by low star, right? Or related to tension, as we see. And this is mapped to just sphere, actually. So bulk sphere, but only covered particular region. So cut it out this plane, part of the sphere. And if we change this tension, then low goes to larger, right? So this uh, this angle is gets smaller, They're like this way, and then this is uh, uh, a sphere gets larger. Tension large means the degree of freedom is large, and also boundary entropy in the end is very large, and the space time gets larger. And uh, anyway, we evaluate Euclidean action, and we have a lot of divergence, but this is familiar. We can do some holographic randomization and pick up finite piece, this one. And this, this is a first answer to this boundary entropy. Low star divided by 40 Newton. And if we take a Attention to be very large, low star also gets larger, and the boundary entropy is also linearly gets larger. And we can, yeah, so in terms of tension, we have arc tangent hyperbolic, and this is a monotonic function of uh, tension. R is the radius radius, C is central charge. Okay, this is a fast uh, evaluation, and we also try remaining two different definitions, but we get the same answer. 
So this is here is a, a annulus amplitude, right? Annulus amplitude, and we talk about this, you know, annulus amplitude. But we have to. This case is a little non-trivial, so we have to talk about phase transition, right? Low temperature phase and high temperature phase. This is same as the usual Hawking phase transition. Low temperature phase is summer ABS3, and high temperature phase is BTZ. We have this is a familiar metric, and we can so we need to solve this boundary. A condition, and this is some differential equation we get, and there are some analytical solution, low temperature phase and high temperature phase, right? like this. And here is a sketch. So low temperature phase is much like this, it's capped off geometry, right? Summer radius geometry. And we this is a boundary, right? We are talking about a CFT on a, a CFT on a interval, times time direction. I didn't write time direction. This is a space direction is just interval. Right, it's dual is like this region. And this is a low temperature phase, but the high temperature phase, we have horizon, right? Final temperature, we have a horizon. And that case, we have, this, uh, we are talking about CFT on an interval, but it's just extend the surface Q. So surface Q is decomposing two parts, right? They are disconnected. But this surface Q is end of the two end points, but connected. This is connected and disconnected phase transition. So we, we have to evaluate action, and with this particular value of tension, and they compare these two different free energy and pick up a smaller one. And then this is the answer, right? This is a very simple answer. So first, low temperature phase is very trivial, looks like trivial. And this is, the power is, of course, fixed by a conformal isolated in dimensional region. And this is also a familiar form of the thermal entropy, thermodynamical contribution, thermal contribution. But we have extra contribution because there are some boundary, right? So boundary term, boundary. So this gives some exactly twice of the uh, boundary entropy. Because twice, because we have a two boundary, as you see. This is exactly how we get this boundary entropy. Because uh, as we already explained, right, one second definition of boundary entropy is to look at single amplitude, and we take a long length of single to be very large. And this is exactly high temperature in this language. And that case, we have this you know, summer, normal summer entropy plus boundary entropy, as we, we expect. And we, if we talk about this, which phases uh, favored, we can write the phase diagram. This is a tension, right? Large tension, BTG, black hole is favored. But small tension, BTG is not favored. Right? Mostly, as a small tension, we have like this here, right? So, uh, we have a summer ADS gets larger, right? But almost summer radius is dominant. But large tension, BTG is quite dominant, even for small temperature. This is a temperature. This is, this is a temperature. So this is a normal phase, hooking phase transition temperature. But tension of temperature changes if we change the tension. Right? Gets smaller and gets larger. But this is quite natural. Because large tension means large degree of freedom. We have a more deconfined black hole like phase is favored. Okay, so and uh, so let's uh, let us try final one. This is namely calculation of entanglement because because but this is much simpler. We just calculate lengths, right? Uh, geodesic lengths, and this is very easy because this in this coordinate system just integral of row, right? Row minus infinity, which means here, and row to row star, row star is here, right? And we have divergence from row infinity, and we get uh, some row star coordinate. This is precisely the same as this result, right? This one and also. This one, exactly the same. This is kind of consistent check, and we can again confirm that boundary entropy given by low star divided by 4G. And here we can also measure more, more general case, and so that the boundary condition is more general, and namely this leads to the holographic G theorem. So we talk about, we fix metric for simplicity, but we talk about orbitary uh, choice of this boundary energy stress tensor, but we impose narrow energy condition. This is to avoid ghosts. This is usual condition which, when we want to derive some basic property of con uh, unitarity condition for quantum theory, like C theorem and so on, and we do the same thing. And then, so this is, narrow energy condition means this condition. Narrow energy condition requires the second derivative of x is a profile. This profile of surface Q is actually negative. 
So that means, so actually we can, this x prime prime, prime is negative, and uh, we can define actually for a G function. In, in general, we're talking about not exactly conformal invariant situation. We are talking boundary RG flow. And uh, so boundary theory is no longer conformal invariant. We talk about the boundary conformal theory, but at some relevant perturbation, and then we have a boundary RG flow. And that case, we can some measure still measure G function, G uh, boundary entropy by this way, it's just taking angle because we remember right, at the fixed point, low star gives just boundary entropy. So we just take about, and low star was originally just angle, right, angle between X and Z. So we can take this ratio as a candidate of G function. And indeed, this derivative of this guy is indeed uh, satisfy this monotonicity. It's a monotonically decreasing function and uh, kind of RG flow. And a fixed point, of course, this guy precisely agrees what we know about boundary entropy. And this is our holographic G theorem. And this G theorem has an interesting uh, geometrical meaning, especially related to also the absence of one fold, which is features here. So imposing narrow energy condition actually gives this uh, holographic G theorem. And pick, uh, geometrically, this is the following thing. So we have some boundary A, right? This is a C BCFT lives on. This is a boundary of BCFT and nothing here, no physical degree of here. And we are talking about surface Q, right? This is surface Q. And the surface Q, uh, maybe I should do it right here. Surface Q. And okay. And the surface Q is a bend somehow. It's a, this is if this is straight, this is mean boundary conformal invariance, right? Boundary conformal fixed point is just same angle, but it's bend, but uh, not going this dotted line way, right? not in go this way. It's always go to inside because of this constraint. Angle gets smaller, right? This angle here between a vertical line and this Q, it's always monotonically decreasing. It's going this way. So because of this, we cannot allow this configuration in at least a static system, right? You have a two different interval A and B and they are connected. But this is opposite, going opposite this way, right? And it should always go this way. It's, these two guys should not coincide. It can develop some cusp, but this cusp is singular, so we, we don't talk about it. And for smooth configuration, this is not allowed. And this is exactly topological censorship. Namely, there are no traversable wormhole in, in this duality, in ADS CFT. This is well known for the case without the boundary, but the, with boundary case, we can prove by using holographic G7. Like this way. But nevertheless, uh, we want to, we might try to imitate something like this geometry because this looks interesting. They kind of like uh, Einstein Rosenbridge. So this here is a, a one answer to this question. So we cannot realize this at a static background, but we can realize this at instantaneously at some time dependent background. This is a time dependent one whole solutions. And uh, so this is actually analytical continuation of this something we know, right? This spherical solution, right? Dual to this dual to this right? spherical region. And we can take weak contraction as uh, so a weak, weak rotation. This point is that we take a, a analytical continuation into low range signature, then it's go this way. Originally, this is this, right? Yeah, but it's called this. This is, I think, quite a familiar story in uh, uh, Lindora space time, right? This is mapped to this kind of Lindora evolution. And this case point is that this A and B are causally disconnected because you can send signal, but it's always go above of B, right? And this is you know, using ADS BCFT, this is really simply dual to this background, right? So this is A and the physical region is B and A. And the, the, this shaded region is we remove, right? This colored region we eliminate. And then we have some connection, right? In the bulk, but there are no connection in the boundary. On the boundary. But the point is that this is fine because this is a non traversable one hole, not traversable one hole, because we can send signal but always go above, right? Also, same as in the, in the also in the bulk, also we cannot connect B to A in the cosine. So this is a consistent. And also, this is much analog of the uh, eternal black hole right here. So this is a, our background, uh, our system at equal zero, but this is exactly after coordinate mapping, this is exactly the same as BTZ black hole with some cut here. And uh, this is, we can talk of this cross section as an entanglement entropy between A and B, right? This is a cross section, is an entanglement entropy divided by whole G Newton is an entanglement entropy between A and B. 
And this is the same as actually black hole entropy, just this horizon area. This, this purple, region, purple line is the same as this, this one. And we can calculate this entanglement entropy. This is the same story, and some kind of boundary analog of this of the familiar story. Etern we can talk about eternal black hole, and that is our eternal black hole entropy is equivalent to entanglement entropy between left to CFT and right to CFT. It's kind of analog of this. Okay, so now uh, I just uh, go to entanglement image story and finally come back to ADS BCFT. But uh, here I just finished basic introduction of this uh, ADS BCFT. So if we have any question, uh, just ask just now. So, so you already mentioned that like this boundary entropy measures like the decrease of freedom on the, yeah, on the boundary. Mm. What in a summary? What uh, other physical meanings would you associate with this boundary entropy? Can you simply? Uh... Uh, okay. Well, anyway, it's a degree of freedom, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's called entropy because it's anyway uh, describe entropy associated with boundary. We subtract, for example, you can remember, you can look at this formula. This is just some dynamical entropy. Right? Mm -hmm. And this is a bulk contribution, standard linear T behavior. This D, T is temperature. This is a usual conformal fuel theory entropy, some thermodynamic entropy, okay. which comes from also Cardi formula. And this is the extra contribution. This arises because of the presence of boundary. So that way, essentially, this boundary entropy is just kind of boundary as I say, entropy, which really comes from boundary. Mm. And then, uh, mm, yeah, so, oh, right. Uh, and, and this boundary entropy alone, can it also detect uh, phase transitions or? Uh, phase transition, yeah, detect, uh, I, I mean, yeah, boundary, because of boundary entropy contribution, phase temperature, uh, phase transition temperature changes. Okay. This is a usual uh, uh, Hawking phase transition temperature. But if we have a large boundary entropy, then, Temperature, phase transition temperature goes lower. Okay. Now, of course, also this is somehow related to also some topological phase and so on. So there's a relation between 2D CFT and uh, a kind of topological system, like this chance described by Chan Simon's 3D gauge theory. There are other connections also. Thank you. I, can I ask? Can I ask one uh, question? Yes, yeah. Uh. Sorry. I, uh, so uh, you mentioned this uh, analog or the relation between the islands, uh. and then in seems like in the islands people have problems uh, with incorporating gravitons in this kind of into this quantum formula. Uh huh. So for example, when they add some matter, it, it's really mm -hmm. you know they assume there should not be any gravitons contributions. Is is do you uh, see do you yeah. already see similar problem on the level of ADS BCFT uh, or maybe no? I think not? ADS BCFT case that's also included. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think dynamical graviton is included because that is also come from uh, brain world holography. In brain world holography, we are talking about some classical gravity is dual to quantum gravity, and uh, this quantum gravity means we take into account quantum correction about uh, gravity loops also. I see. So in principle, but the problem is that uh, we don't know precise details of these two relations. Okay. But in, in principle, I think this is included. This formula included that actually for for graviton loops. This one, if we talk about this one, and this side this is true. So it's not what's the definition of this guy, and uh, how we can that's right. I think I don't know how to do this precise properly. But uh, if we calculate this way, then it's included. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, no more question? Then I will go to this entanglement wedge. First, I'm talking about entanglement, derivation of entanglement wedge from CFT and finally apply it to ADSB CFT. 
So, of course, there are many works about entanglement. To ex uh, there are many works which explain entanglement, which, but I normally we, we use area safety. We combine area safety, uh, some knowledge of area safety, holographic entanglement entropy, and so on, right? And uh, modular Hamiltonian and so on. But uh, here I just give derivation of entanglement, which pre uh, purely from CFT calculations. And our setup is very simple. Setup is very simple that we have some two di two dimensional conformal field theory. Uh, so I'm focusing focus on two dimensional conformal field, but we can some part of this result we can generalize in higher dimension. Indeed, we did that whole in this paper. And uh, so this uh, set setup is very simple. So we just talk about excited state, simple excited state by primary operator, right? So we have some uh, pass integral, and this is a lower half is defined state, and it's it's conjugate state. Upper half is conjugate bra and ket state. And if we together, pass integral together, we calculate the inner product. And we just act one operator at some location W. W is a holomorphic coordinate and W equal W, w and W bar. And it's, it's conjugate. We just, it's just also location is also complex conjugate or data. And it, as usual, we put some, we make a, some cut and talk about reduced density matrix. This is a basic target, which I want to discuss. So we talk about the state of psi, which is just acted of primary operator on the on top of vacuum, and, tra and we'll talk about such a state, but trace out some region B, right? Other region. We talk about we trace out region B. And we will study, and the point is that this result depends on W. Density matrix are now parameterized by W holographic coordinate. And then, so the why we are looking at this, this is a basic this uh, picture. Uh, captures all information which I, I had in mind, basically. So we are talking about the holography right, in the end. So here it's just, we calculate everything in CFT here, and we talk about two-point function, for example, right? This, if we trace out, if you take a trace of this, this is much like two, exactly two-point function, right? Two-point function, like this. And we talk about the interpretation. In the gravity side, two-point function is calculated by the length of the geodesic line. Right, which connect these two points. This is a point. And we took some time slice, and we, are, we take some subsystem A here, right? subsystem A. And this subsystem A has some bound, bound I, I, I mean, entanglement width, if entanglement width is correct. Right? And if we some excitation, if you have some excitation inside this gamma A as entanglement width, you can detect. But if the excitation is outside of surface, gamma A, then we cannot detect. And, but detect or, we can detect or detect, we cannot detect means this, the sensitivity of this reduced density matrix rho A to this excitation. This is basically we want to compute. And uh, but here, technically we assume following the range, right? This conformal dimension of the operator O is uh, la much larger than one because we use some geodesic approximation, but much smaller than C because we want to neglect back reactions. Very simple. And the, then the, uh, how we can see this sensitivity? So we look at particular quantity called, uh, we look at quantity called information metric, but we especially focus on information metric for fidelity or breast distance. So breast distance is defined by this, but it's much like generalization in a product. You know, if we know this, if we think of this quantity, if psi and psi prime is the same, this is zero, right? This basically measures distance between two different quantum states. And it is a mixed state version of this. Right? Square root is a bit annoying, but there is basically if rho, rho equal rho prime, this is just one, so this distance is zero. Right? This is just a distance measure between two different mixed states. And then assume, we assume density matrix depends on the parameter. This is a, a point because we, our density matrix depends on the W coordinate. Then breast metric is defined this following way. So we have a, like, we talk about the density matrix at lambda and lambda plus d lambda, right? Talk about distance between them and d lambda is infinitely small parameter. Our case is just w. And we expand about, you know, in terms of d lambda square. And there are no linear term. It's always start from quadratic term and the coefficient of this quadratic term is definition of metric, gij. And we can calculate the breast distance for locally excited pure states, which we define. And we here just first assume no tracing out, just full space, talk about total space. Then 
everything is very simple. So this uh, breast distance is just the uh, inner product. And we can calculate two-point function universally. And finally, breast distance network turns out to be just Poincare radius, a two-dimensional hyperbolic plane. This uh, metric looks exactly the same as time slice of ADS. And indeed, this is not surprising because this is something we can intuitively expect it here. So we are talking about some distance between these two different states, but this uh, in ADS side, this, this blue guy excites this point and uh, green guy excites this point. And we are talking about distance between two different states in the bulk. Right? And this difference also quite naturally related to the distance between two excitations, the TPP prime. So it's quite natural that not 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 so completely sure, but it's not so surprising. But uh, so we get uh, some anyway time slice of ADS, but the coefficient is uh, depend on the probe, right? It's really proportional to conformal dimension because conformal dimension because heavy object can probe shorter distance. This is not also surprising. But anyway, point is that this breast metric is universal. This is something too good, right? Because even though we talk about okay, free theory, free scalar theory, we get area space time. But we we think free field theories don't have a standard uh, ADS dual, right? Because there's lots of con quantum corrections we expect. So we should not get a semi classical or anti dositor space for free scalar. So this is something strange thing happened. But because we are looking at some simplest quantity, too much simple, too simple quantity. And somehow everything is universal. But we can look at more sophisticated quantity, which means reduced density matrix. Some quantity related to reduced density. So we, we can see the difference between uh, the one uh, I mean. Uh, we can see the difference holograph CFT and other uh, free theory. So here is the one. So we are talking this one, and we so we can calculate. In the end, we calculate also fidelity. But uh, before that, it is easier to calculate this. Lenny version, kind of Lenny version of fidelity. If low, low prime, low and low prime same, this is just one, right? And it's always in the range. This is also kind of distance nature. But it's less, less uh, ideal property have, they have actually. But anyway, this guy is easy to calculate because it's a four point function, right? And uh, so we can talk about this quantity. Low, low prime, low has a two insertion operator, right? And O, and low prime also O, so the whole point of action. And in the end, what we find is that if excitation, so if a low W is this green guy, and low W prime is this uh, blue guy, and both are outside, then automatically I low low prime is one. That means somehow observer who are sitting inside A, think these two guys are same, or even though their location is different, they just same, degenerate. These two guys are degenerate for this observer. But if these two guys are inside, both are inside region A, then we can actually distinguish. Indeed, I roll prime equal to zero, except W equal to W prime. If these two guys are coincide, of course, this goes to one, because they are same state. But uh, if it's slightly, even, for the, even if the two points are slightly different, I roll prime is zero. And that way we can distinguish right, this entanglement with like structure, right? And uh, this is only happens for this holographic CFT. So uh, this is some detail I'm not going to talk about. And uh, so we are basically talk about you know low and low prime, and we excite this point, just fix uh, talk about the blue guy, right? There are four point function basically, because we paste to each other along this replicatory and this way. And this we just talk about, you know. This four point function or this green four point function. Green is outside and the blue is inside. And inside the case, you can imagine, right? This we talk about uh, weak contraction because uh, in holographic CFT, we, we can treat this primary operator as a free field, a free kind of field. This is kind of come from large end factorization. And then we, we want to contract this uh, nearest neighbor, right? So this G2, G3. We contract this, this guy. That means we contract this guy with this quite non-trivial, right? But the whole green case, we con we, green case outside of entanglement wedge, we want to con contract because these two guys are closer, much closer to C3. Z1, so that means W1, W2. And uh, this map is, right? This is W prime map to Z prime by this map. But anyway, this guy, we want to con uh, con uh, contract. This means these two guys are separately, con we contract it. That means it's trivial, very trivial. So accordingly, 
yeah, so accordingly, we, I, I mean, so this green guy is gives us just trivial result, I roll prime equal one, and the other case, less than one. And yeah, so that way, so for green one, trivial weak contraction case actually is dominant for this case, is namely just this one. You produce this one. If these two guys are outside, it's just one. And if these two guys are inside, we get a non trivial result. We can detect the difference between low and low prime. Okay. So this actually uh, basically answer to this question how we can see uh, entanglement to H from CFT, right? So this is a, here, boundary is a CFT. Right, we find some interestingly interesting this semicircle, which gives us separation between trivial phase and non-trivial phase. Trivial phase means we cannot distinguish two different points, but non-trivial means we, we can distinguish two points inside this circle, semicircle. But this semicircle is precisely the shadow of actual entanglement wedge in the bulk. Right? So if we this point we relate this point by geodesic line, right? So if we take a shadow, we can take a projection of this correct entanglement which towards the bulk, right? Then this precisely gives this semicircle, which we find here, which we find here, or we find here. This, this region is precisely mapped to this semicircle, and also here. So in that way, we just only look at CFT, but we impose holographic CFT uh, input like large and factorization, we can see, we can detect this entanglement in CFT side. And we can also compare the result to the free scalar where like this vertex operator and we can calculate everything analytically. And here is a plot. And so we talk of, so we have a token low W and low W prime. And if we fix W, location of W inside, and we change the location of W prime, and this is a horizontal and vertical axis, right, means just location location like this. And then, of course, this uh, height is the uh, value of this I roll of prime. And this is a sharp peak, right? If this point, the other point gets closer to this W, W prime gets closer to W, then we have a peak, just the value is one. Right? They say these two guys are the same, but otherwise it's different. And this is also true for free scale. These two guys are similar. But the non-trivial thing happens when we go outside. Right? W is outside, then if the uh, one more guy, W prime is outside, then we precisely see just one, right? Observer think, observer in A think these two guys are same, even though their location is different, right? Their location is different. But if we suddenly, this outside, uh, so the W prime get into this circle, right? Like this way, suddenly observer tells that these two guys are different. It goes to, suddenly goes to zero. There are very sharp, sharp dip and sharp wall, and sharp, we get a semicircle entanglement wedge in holographic safety. But if we calculate the same thing, free scalar, it's like very ambiguous. Right? It looks similar, maybe quality similar, but it's, there are no sharp wedge structure. And that way, and sharp entanglement wedge only available in holographic safety. So this is a, a simplest, simplest example which we can precisely derive uh, entanglement wedge. And I, I come to more complicated examples, which is more interesting. But we can do the same calculation for breast metric, but it's, we can take some replica, double replica limit. But the, and the good thing, we can also get metric. And, but this metric precisely agree with previous, my previous uh, explanation of this pure state for the total system case. And the same, same is also, so yeah, we can calculate it, but I, I'm not going the details. So we can talk about the pizza like you know, calculation, replica calculation, and in the end reproduce this result. So we have a result for outside of entanglement wage and so on. And we can generalize this to uh, excited states like black holes, a global radius, and black hole, BTG black hole. And here are plots of breast distance or breast metric, breast metric here for free theory. Free theory, it's not it deviate. That this is a metric. Right? This is much something not familiar metric. Right? This is deviates from ADS in this Poincaré ADS. So that way, if we trace out some regions, uh, no longer we see anti-Dogitta metric as an information metric. It's more like some non-trivial metric. Like this. Okay. So now, but uh, 
to confirm entanglement, we should go further and we should confirm double interval case. This is because we have some interesting phase transition behavior, right? Region A and region B. So we are talking about subsystem A consists of A1 and this joint union A1 and A2, right? A1 plus A2. And we can calculate these two guys. And uh, here are actually up, my, yeah, okay. So this here are some simple summary, but we, we try first I, rho, rho prime and fidelity, but they give some different result here. This is non-trivial. Single interval case, they give the same result, but double interval is highly non-trivial calculation and gives different result. I, I will explain this kind of, uh, just soon later. And uh, so computation by rho prime is more, more, more complicated. It, now we encounter some elliptic function because we have to conform map, you know, double slits, right? Replica manifolds, right? And in the end, we get the torus, right? So the torus depends, it has a non-trivial module, right? And then, of course, it's related to the elliptic function. And uh, so, we, but the basic calculation is the same. And we are looking at some two-point function, basically, and probe this point and calculate this information metric or this I rho prime. And then we have a two different phase. Right, depending on the parameter, even before we put some excitations, that depend on the moduli of these two slits. The connected phase and disconnected phase, they have a different evaluation, uh, 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 different correlation functions. The summary ADS, and this is a, for example, BTZ, right, calculations. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so and that way, so we can get some condition of non trivial control contraction where we get non-trivial results, non-trivial weak contractions. But anyway, so finally we get this result. So for connected phase case, so if this indeed right, this interval is a very large, right? And the minimal surface connect. And here actually we wrote both CFT prediction and the ADS prediction. ADS prediction, and they are really gets very closer. But uh, this almost degenerate, but different. Point is different. This blue guy is a CFT calculation using elliptic function, and this yellow guy is come from actual entanglement wedge, uh, gravity calculation. They are a little bit deviates, but we, you cannot distinguish from this picture. Right? The disconnected case is also similar. It's only one percent or a few percent error, but this is anyway different. So in summary, we have this. Right. So this uh, green one is a real entanglement wedge, and the Red guy is a entanglement of a CFT calculation wedge from I rho prime. Slightly uh, different, but the structure is the same. Qualitatively, topological structure and so on exactly the same. And this wedge satisfies nice, it's something different, but it's nice property as received. So, but, uh, so why is this? But actually, this uh, I rho prime is not so much good uh, measure and the uh, information for example, quantum information people don't think about this good measure. And I think this is one reason. But also, one more reason, it involves stress low low prime, right? So here, so let's go back. So it's like low low prime. Low low prime is a very funny guy, much like we know, right? Any entropy has don't have a good property as, as much as uh, von Neumann entropy, especially about gravity dual, right? Gravity dual have a back reaction, right? For, to calculate any something similar happened because low star basically this is approximate to low star and low star is different from ground state it's very highly excited state here fidelity is good because if, if we count power right this is one quarter half one quarter totally one there are no back reaction here so that way because of this back reaction we get a slightly modified result this is something we expect here but anyway, but nevertheless, we can try some breast metric, right? So real fidelity calculation and like using this pizza like calculation. And we take a particular limit, right? And to get the fidelity, then we can roughly intuitively see this. This There are two slits, right? Because we have two cuts, right? But uh, one cut we can neglect. Then in the end, we just get reduced to single cut calculation. And that case, we can precisely reproduce this correct one, this green guy from uh, fidelity calculation. Anyway, so this is a consistent story. So this is a, a basic explanation how we can derive entanglement weight from uh, CFT calculation. And I just go to apply this to ADS BCFT, right? Island. So 
Yeah, it is. In this case, we only difference we put a boundary, right? Very similar to this uh, torus like uh, situation. This is, uh, we, we just put the new, new ingredient, just we put some cut here, up and down. And in some sense, you can just G2, kind of G2O before of the, what we did for torus case, double interval case. And this case is just single interval because we have a boundary, it's non trivial. It's a, we have a token mirror, it's much like double interval, but we just talk about VCFT, it's just one interval. And uh, yeah, so we talk about, you know, we, because we try this VCFT simple state of this boundary state and regulated by Hamiltonian like this. This is much like also appears in the quantum quench calculation. And that case we told us, but we can't into half, that means we have a cylinder, right? Cylinder geometry. And we have, that case we have a three contraction, right? The trivial contraction and the non-trivial contraction of this large end factorization. And, but we have a boundary, so there are third one, which is a boundary contraction. But the point is that we don't think about boundary constraint here, because if a boundary constraint exists, even for pure state, right, even if we don't trace out any parts, we cannot prove the geometry. So the operator is not good. This exercise is not, not good one to probe geometry. So anyway, we want to uh, probe geometry. We are not just interested in exercise. We just use exercise state to probe geometry. So if there is a boundary condition, this probe is not useful. So we, we focus on particular excitation, or particular primary state, which don't have this boundary contraction. Especially, for example, this, if this primary operator has some charge, then it, this kind of contraction is not favored. So this is an assumption. Under this assumption, but we can uh, nice really produce uh, entanglement image, right? So this is a, a, a so, Okay, so this is the ADS. This is a standard CFT calculation. We have a boundary here, and they took a region A, subsystem A, and uh, this is a SCFT wedge. This is an entanglement wedge. This is a holographic dual. And we have a black hole horizon, and it's end. But if the size of A gets larger, it's actually end on the black hole horizon. So this, this region, right, it's called essentially same as island, this part. So this case is no island, this case is island. Or this case is disconnected, and this is connected. Something such a flange. And we can manifest the CGs, all these uh, phases, we can find this basically same one, but it's smaller deviation because we are calculating either or prime again. Small deviation, but essentially entanglement to edges gravity agree with CFT calculation. And in this case, we have some, we can neglect this green guy because green guy appears to uh, correspond to this contraction. So we don't want to think about this, then we just have uh, some this particle lines. And this precisely agrees with what we expect for entanglement of it in ADS BCFT. Okay, so then, so in this way, anyway, we directly in BCFT calculation, we confirm that uh, this prescription, right? And uh, of course, entropy calculation already know, but uh, we confirm this prescription for including this entanglement of it. Uh, this, this, uh, Colored region is really dual to this region A information because it's like this, right? This is A and this this region, which end on some other. This is exactly true. Okay, so these are basic uh, uh, technical, but it's just CFT derivation of this ADS BCFT and it's their uh, entanglement with structure. Okay, so any questions so far? Now I go to uh, connection to. Uh, island story. Okay, so let me go. Yeah, yeah, ah, okay. Yes, yes, please ask. Uh. I have uh, one question about mm. um, um, so when you about actually the previous section about yeah about this row and row prime. Mm. Is it possible to consider a case that row and the row prime they have different conformal weight? A row and the row prime is a different. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that case actually. Uh, we just see, okay, good, good question. Yeah, that case, what we basically see, for example, if we talk about single interval case, right? So that case, if we put some different operator in something, right? Different conformal dimension, different operator. Then, then if these two guys are outside, we, we see, we cannot see this kind, it's always zero because these two guys are defined in, in this first one. For this graph, we just get always zero, basically, because these two guys are different. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, because one of them is inside A, that means observer can at least access to this one. 
And uh, this observer can tell these two guys are different because other guys are outside. But uh, if we talk about this second case, right? This mm -hmm. case, actually, we get, we just get, uh, uh, we get, uh, yeah, this precise the same. Because uh, if two guys are, even though these two guys are different, but observer is not access to this information. It just says it may be similar. Right. But if right. we go inside, the observer suddenly know they are different. It goes to zero. Right. Actually, I'm more thinking like, can we get some um, metric with different uh, conformal weight? So, so we it's a different conformal weight. Uh huh. Um, but but uh, yeah. So for D, we we get metric only this kind of setup. If you have a peak, we can get a non-trivial metric. Uh -huh. Entanglement. In this case, we don't we don't have a metric. Okay, I see. Okay. Mm. It's just say information metric is basically zero. I see. So probably there is like some kind of delta function that mm -hmm. uh, compare this yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. of this. I see. Right, 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 right. That's case we can have a understanding of metric. I see. Thank you very much. Yeah, here we go. Any other question? Okay. So yeah, to connect to island story, we have to talk about uh, uh, brain world holography. This is quite old subject. And uh, also problem is that is we don't understand this completely. Of course, this is, if this is understood very, this is a very powerful uh, tool because it relates quantum gravity to classical gravity. But the problem is that we don't understand so much. But uh, so uh, my discussion will be very kind of heuristical and qualitative. So, but anyway, the idea is very simple. Come from Randall, original come from Randall Sandrum setup. And then we have some anti doshita space, like this Poincare anti -dosita. We have some boundary, right? boundary Q. But usually we impose Dirichlet boundary condition. This, uh, uh, using Dirichlet boundary condition, we can formulate ADS safety. This is a usual setup. But actually, we can talk about uh, Neumann boundary condition as we also used for to use for this end of the world brain. So that case, what happens? So this is first imposed by Randall Sander. And in uh, that case, we expect this their dynamical gravity lives on the boundary. And we can confirm actually some gravity degree of freedom is localized on this boundary. And uh, so that means, so this d-dimensional gravity, uh, totally d plus one, but d-dimensional gravity localized on the boundary, and this is called brain world. And the effective, you can, that, that means that we have some effective Newton constant. Newton constant should not be zero. And they, we can find, uh, roughly we can find this by Carter Klein reduction. So we have a d plus one dimension action, but we can Einstein Hilbert term, but we can just integrate z direction and we get d dimension Einstein Hilbert term. And by using that, we can have this relation. So A is uh, this cutoff, right? Uh, the location which we put boundary. We have this relation between lower dimensional Newton constant and higher dimensional Newton. Constant. And the brain world holography tells us that classical gravity on d plus one dimensional anti doshita space with Neumann boundary condition imposed is equivalent to some sort, some sort of quantum gravity on boundary brain. So, but also some, some quantum gravity, but coupled to also this CFT, right? This CFT appears for this ADS d plus one CFT. D. Same large and CFT is coupled to this gravity. But the problem is that we don't know precise what kind of gravity we have in mind here. That's still a mistake. But uh, we expect this because the gravity degree anyway, uh, now lives on the boundary. If we impose a Dirichlet boundary, because no gravity at all, so it's uh, just a uh, classical gravity on ADS is equivalent to CFT. But uh, Neumann case, we have a dynamical gravity remains. So that's the degree of freedom should be included. This is a basic idea of a brain world holography. And we have some, see, some can see some roots of this from, uh, for example, calculation of entanglement entropy. So we can talk about this standard holographic entanglement entropy d plus one dimension. And we can expand this a, it's very small. We can expand by like this way, one of a expansion. These are familiar area row divergence. If you just use standard area safety correspondence, CFT area row, and this is a sub reading called divergence. But if we, now we impose Neumann boundary condition, we, we, we have different interpretation. And uh, so we can interpret this one, especially reading one, as uh, this one, because we know right relation. Right? The same relation appears. 
and we can rewrite this in terms of boundary of A area divided by 4G Newton, but Newton constant is lower dimension Newton constant, right? So we have some gravity, this still remains there. So this is much like gravitational entropy there. And uh, so you can promote this setup so that we have a black hole on the boundary. This is called brain world black hole, right? discussed by these papers. And that case, we can have this real gravity entropy, gravity black hole entropy, and it's just an equivalent to entanglement entropy in the bulk or as a dual CFT. But anyway, that way we, we encounter, uh, so we have a nice relation between higher dimension Newton constant, this is a classical gravity, but related to some quantum gravity. Indeed, there are correction. This much looks like correction, quantum correction, quantum gravity corrections in, on the brain. So, so yeah, so area law is interpret on the other hand as some gravitational end. So anyway, this is a kind of a brain world idea. And uh, so let's assume then we have some kind of triality. This is all, always quite heavily nowadays used in the context of a, a island calculation. So we have a ADS BCFT already explained. That means we have a boundary conformation series dual, dual to Right, this setup, end of the world brain and M and uh, bulk ADS B plus one dimension. This is something already I explained. And also, just before here, right, we can use this idea in a slightly different setup, namely this one. Right? But this is also Neumann boundary condition. Right? There are dynamical gravity, and we can regard this as a brain world. Then this setup is equivalent to this setup. Right? So we have a gravity, d-dimensional gravity, there are some Newton constant remains on here, Neumann brain, and they are coupled. And that means these two guys should be same, but this is also something we know very much because this gravity lives on now ADS, this is the ADS geometry as already explained, right? This is the ADS space, d, ADS d dimension. And that is dual to CFT d minus one. And this CFT d minus one, maybe we can think that's just some degree of freedom which lives on the brain. So this three description are all equivalent and they are consistent with what we know. So this is a, a quite useful duality between them. But the problem is that, so we don't know this connection pretty much because this brain wall holography is not completely understood. But anyway, so qualitatively we can use this connection. And so this leads to this island form basically. So this, is a, uh, uh, this logic is used, manifestly used by this paper, Arumheri, Mahaha, Jan, uh, Marda Sena and Zhao, but all, all, uh, much earlier, so th this island formula already predicted by Pennington and Arum and collaborators. And, uh, but anyway, this is a, a formula, this famous formula, and it's like uh, area term and this bulk entangle. So we have a talk about CFT coupled to some gravity, right? And the point is that we always insist uh, the choice of subsystem on CFT because we don't want to put subsystem in gravity because we don't know silver space structure of gravity. So we can put some subsystem in A and uh, we can talk about entanglement entropy. This is, sounds like a consistent question. I mean, very different question. And the answer is not only we take this region, but also we put some kind of artificial region called iron uh, and uh, combine these two and calculate this uh, Baroque entropy, uh, quantum entanglement entropy. And plus, because we have put some separation in the gravity, there are gravity edge modes, now that contributes to this area term. And we, uh, we take a sum of this and minimize it. This is a basic idea. And some cases, we, we should not put any iron. But some cases, we should put iron, right? because there are many possible choices, and we minimize it. But this configuration that I've already explained, this is exactly the same. Similar, exactly uh, analogous to you know this ADS BCFT calculation. Now, roughly, you can cut this first term and correspond to this y, and second contribution roughly first one. And this, yeah, so that way we can derive this. And the, 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 using this formula, people derive this page curve and so on. Black hole and homage. I'm not. This is not a focus on my talk, but I think you have had several talk of this. There are many, many uh, developments of this. And so this is the same one, which I showed. This is contribution and the expanded part, and this guy gives this area contribution. Okay. Okay, so I think it's totally, I had it totally 
that roughly length is two hours. So I just now switch to final topic. But if uh, any question, I'm happy to uh, have now. So, so you do not rely on any black hole considerations for your variation of the entanglement entropy. You simply can do that independently. So is to understand that correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th this setup is just to use. This is a flat space, and this is just a ADF space. This case is no no black hole itself. And that case, there are many. Of course, there are many different interpretations. But this case, um. Yeah, we, we can just change this. Uh, one point is that we can shift this Newton constant and we can include it, it here. But look, we can some kind of exchange of terms. And that changes the interpretation a little bit. But any, anyway, yeah, for, for this case, yeah, for this basic setup, we don't need black hole here. That's it. But the point is that this is anti dosita space. In some sense, anti dosita space is very close to black hole. Especially if we talk restrict to the ADS three setup, this is a kind of ADS two, and ADS two is also already black hole, as you know. And the most applications so far I, I, in using this kind of, uh, as I, especially from the viewpoint of replica one for and so, it's basically ADS two story. And that case, it's also this analysis also looks like black hole because changing if we choose particular patch, then you know ADS two global ADS two looks like black hole also. So it's very, very analogous to that. But uh, in higher dimension, uh, we don't need precisely this black hole. OK, uh, no more question? Okay, so let me uh, go to final topic, which is like uh, our recent work on this co-dimension two photography. So the setup of uh, uh, so what we think is a kind of application of this ADS species, but we use ADS species twice, right? So previously we used this region, right? This is boundary wise, boundary the boundary CFT, and also some end of the world brain. But we put end of the world brain also the other side, right? like this one. So it's like which. But we cut by putting some UV cutoff, the, the corruption, and we pick up this yellow region. This is called wedge region. And we are talking about the holography for this wedge region. This is really so different from normal ADS CFT because this is no longer asymptotical ADS. Right? So it's uh, if we have some one asymptotical ADS region, it's much like ADS CFT, but both sides are off from the ADS boundary. So this is a, anyway, so the, if we write metric, it's a very similar to previous one, we, but now rho is restricted to the small range, finite range, rho star to minus rho, uh, minus rho star to rho star, and which. And okay, so this is a Poincaré, and the full metric, it looks like uh, Poincaré ADSD plus one. And uh, we are talking about this brain, this end of the world brain is ADS, D dimensional ADSD. And this our claim of which photography is like this, what's the dual to this region, right? And D plus one dimensional region, but it's very narrow region. And in the end turns out to be two dimension lower CFT appears. But before that, we first project this, we can first use photography to one dimension lower theory, which lives on the brain, right? But this brain we impose Neumann boundary condition. It's much like D-dimensional quantum gravity, like so they're using brain wide holography. And we can get one dimension lower. And this is exactly D minus one dimensional conformal Q theory. Right? So that, this is a heuristic explanation, but we, of course, we should be careful and we should calculate some quantity to confirm this. But because that, we can just mention the, how this is related to the ADSB CFT. Right? So we, we can think about double double boundary of this uh, ADSB CFT, much like conform fuel lives on the interval. And this uh, end of the world brain, basically. And we take this widus goes to zero, squash to zero size. Then precisely we get this geometry, right? Or this geometry or this geometry. And so this is a, a way to understand this setup that namely, so this bulk region is dual to boundary CFT. Right, we have a two boundary and a bar. 
But because the bulk region squares to zero size, only the remaining degree of freedom is a boundary. Right? So in boundary is d minus one dimension. So some degree of freedom of the boundary, which much like CFT, d minus one, it should be dual to this part. This is a, a heuristic idea, how, why we think about this, it is, uh, sorry, which holography. So we can calculate entanglement entropy, but here we have double minimization because we have some region A, but we first extend to the Q1, surface Q, brain wall, but again, finally, uh, general, uh, extend to the D plus one dimensional bar, right? So this, uh, and then this is double minimization formula. But this minimization formula is also naturally derived from this AGSB-CFT prescription, just using this kind of island -like ideas. So that sense, this region is island. And uh, so we can calculate the holographic entanglement entropy. And uh, yeah, we can choose particular case, simplest case, is subsystem A is just around this. Then we can easily find this minimal surface. It's part of this south, part of the sphere. Now, and radius is L, small L. And then we can calculate the holographic entanglement entropy, like this. And we can have our area row divergence leading to our area row. But now, fit nicely with, so we, even though we talk about the ADS D plus one, it nicely fits with D minus one dimensional CFT because we restrict everything to very narrow region. Doesn't attach the bubble, so it uh, gets one dimension lower. And there are conform anomaly, and we can confirm this conform anomaly is also consistent with what we expect for this d minus one dimension. Okay. And let's take a d equals three. This ADS four actually ADS four case we get a two D CFT because we can evaluate you know entanglement entropy. It's like logarithmically divergence. Even though we talk about ADS four, but if we calculate entanglement entropy, it's like logarithmically divergent. And this coefficient should be identified C over three if this is really related to, to the CFT. That way we can get central charge estimation. But this estimation also consistent with this, this relation with the lower dimensional uh, uh, Newton constant, the higher dimensional Newton constant, which I explained in the context of brain world just before. And we can calculate also just uh, free energy, right? evaluating action. And that also gives some logarithmic divergence about this action, this is precisely the viral anomaly. And this also leads to the same value, precisely the same value as this, this consistency check. And, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, and uh, we can confirm this entanglement entropy calculation and the cohort anomaly precisely agree. And this is a two dimensional case, and but we can repeat the same calculation for higher dimensional case like 4D, CFT, and so on, and always we have nice agreement. And all the dimensional conform theory, we end up with some constant. Right? And this is like an F quantity. And uh, so, so far, all structure is exactly the same as uh, D minus one dimensional CFT. So this is a, a holography between D, minus, D plus one dimensional space time and D minus one dimensional space time. OK, so basically, these are all of my talks. And uh, let me summarize conclusions. So in, in the initial part of this talk, we review two different sub-region, sub-region duality, and then, namely entanglement wedges and agsb CFT. And we show that entanglement wedges can be derived purely from CFTs by considering uh, information metric. And the CFT method can also derive this entanglement wedge in agsb CFT, and in that case, we naturally get this island prescription in the double holography argument. And uh, also, taking the limit we think double copy of ADS BCFT and taking some limit, we finally explain some co interesting connection between co dimension two, ho uh, interesting co dimension two holography between D minus one dimensional CFT and D plus one dimensional gravity on a wedge. So, holographic entanglement, that case, holographic entanglement entropy derived from ADS BCFT gives double minimization formula. And uh, yeah, here are some, some future problems. And uh, also in our paper uh, that's quoted just before, we talked about some little bit exotic boundary condition, Neumann boundary condition. So here is an example. It's a little bit surprising. So we are talking about the full ADS space time, and we want to put some boundary. Right? And previously, we put some disk, for example. We put some disk at the boundary is equal to zero, and we, then it's dual is somehow some region inside. Uh, sphere. 
But here,、uh, there are no boundary at the ADS, asymptotically ADS boundary, but we can somehow eliminate some bulk region, internal region, like round sphere. We can just remove this round sphere in the Euclidean ADS3 or even higher dimensional ADS. And in that case, still, this boundary is, has a nice property that KAB is proportional to HAB. So, under some particular value of tension, this is actually satisfied. I know, Neumann boundary condition is satisfied. But this tension turns out to be exotic value, which is actually the, our previous one.、Uh, always tension is bounded by one of our D minus one of our. And this is consistent also. If we impose this bound, we get all physical quantities sensible, like G function becomes real value. If we go beyond this bound, G function, random entropy goes to long value, like imaginary value. But let's admit, just let's make some tolerant idea and just assume that it's okay, then we can go tension is greater than D minus one of R. Then this configuration appears, naturally appears. So maybe it is interesting to think what, what this configuration means. And one way to see this, we can take analytical continuation in time evolution, right? Low range and time. This, is, this part is the same, right? This is Hartle Hawking like way to prepare state. But we, after this, we go to low range signature, it's like expand, expand. And in the end, it reaches at the boundary. But the point is that this boundary surface here is space like. So CFT side, it looks like a space like surface. A、uh, uh, boundary conform f u s e r y which lives on space like boundary, which is、uh, unusual, of course. It, space time suddenly started or something, it's usually we don't think. But this space like strange guy actually mapped to time like boundary in the bulk. So, time like boundary in the bulk doesn't sound strange, right? And also, tension is like some value. But it's a, anyway, it's not tension itself, is sense, and itself is a real value. It's no, 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 nothing strange. So, maybe this suggests actually we can define this kind of exotic theory on the boundary. From the people on the boundary, it looks like exotic, but maybe we can define such a, a setup in the bulk. And it, this seems to be described some expanding universe. So, it's a bubble, also the bubble new creation. And,、uh, and, uh, but if we look at this CFT side, Euclidean CFT, then what is This guy, d u a l t actually, we, we know one answer which we discuss in this paper. It's just an imaginary radius disk.、Like、here, no disk, right? It doesn't uh, uh, intersect with boundary, but this is actually if we take a disk,、uh, boundary conform f u s e r y and、uh, analytical continue to radius to imaginary value, then we get a precisely the same situation. So maybe such an analytical extension may be possible, and,、uh, but I'm not sure. And then finally, also it's quite interesting to see a more, a proceed more about co dimension two holography. And so, one interesting question is how we can realize this in string theory. And can we think about some RG flow? And so, what about correlation function? So, so far, as long as we see in, in calculation of entanglement entropy and the c o h a n o m a l y it looks like just standard D minus one CFT, but also. We can ask that question, right? If that is a normal holographic CFT, then it sounds strange, right? Because we know already it is dual to ADSD, right? D minus one dimensional、um, CFT is dual to ADSD. But、uh, our case, somehow we get a ADSD plus one,、right? how this appears. So maybe we are particularly looking at special holographic CFT or some, something a little bit different from holographic CFT, or there are many possibilities, maybe even not. Not even looks like CFT, but maybe something different, or there are many interesting、uh, questions we should ask. So I think I will stop here. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. And yeah, I guess we can unmute and、uh, thank Tadashi. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.、Um, yeah, we already had questions, but of course.、Uh, If someone else has another question, then please uh, just uh, speak up. Yes, Tadashi, I still have、uh, two questions.、Mm. The first question is that、um, in the double holographic、uh, case to consider the island, actually,、mm -hmm. there are some divergence from、uh, the, 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 when it hits on the asymptotic boundary, right? 
Uh, yeah, so we have a boundary. And which divergence are you talking about? Uh, I'm talking about the UV divergence. Ah, UV divergence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, of course we, so we have some divergence here, but we can put it to here. We go by renormalization, Newton constant renormalization. Ah, you mean to get it inside the genuta? Yeah. So yeah. So one obvious question. So we, if we create the island region, right? Then mm. this gives the extra divergence, right? Looks like extra divergence here. Yeah. But but actually, if this tilted is not true, but anyway, some might one might wonder maybe this gives an extra divergence because we have a new boundary, and uh, if, anyway, we take a minimum, so such a contribution should not be effective or something, right? So but that... actually, but but actually, point is that we can actually talk about we have to also take into quantum correction to Newton constant, and we can just renormalize Newton constant. This divergence from here is mapped. To Normal, uh, uh, we can absorb this divergence into this normalization of Newton constant. And so the, then, the, then, then we don't need to worry about divergence for island region. Uh -huh. And indeed, yes. that happened for this brain world setup. Mm -hmm. This is exactly this kind of phenomenon. So it like, looks like divergence from CFT viewpoint, right? area of divergence. Right. But this is actually interpreted as a Newton constant. OK, I see. Uh -huh. I see. Mm -hmm. But but this divergence is not the same as the, like uh, the usual entanglement uh, entropy divergence on the. Uh, it's, it's basically the same. Basically same. Okay. Oh, uh, could anyway, it's come from this UV region. Right. Oh, uh. I see. Yeah. The second question I have is that so in this code dimension loop. A code that mentioned the two holography. Mm -hmm. How, if you combine the idea of BCFT and then this code that mentioned the two holography, so that means uh, we cut and this region, like if it's ADS3, mm -hmm. then we cut, um, we cut the chunk that is above some time slice. So we have a boundary CFT, mm -hmm. right? Or though it's one. Uh, so sorry, maybe I missed it. So this kind of we have this kind of setup, right? We have a right. boundary here. Uh, right. Which uh, are you talking about? So the, that now uh, the, in this holography, mm -hmm. uh, because it's co-dimensional two holography, we have a CFT that is two-dimensional lower, right? Mm -hmm. And right. now if we want to consider like the boundary CFT, which means that um, yeah, boundary CFT is here. Uh, yes, the boundary safety, but now the boundary safety has another boundary. Uh, I mean this one. Uh, no. no. But maybe let's, let's go back to original one. So this is our setup. Right. And this is a D plus one dimensional wedge. And our claim this D plus one dimensional wedge is dual to this region. Right. And uh, but this region square, uh, we just say it goes to zero. So this is much like D minus one dimension. Right, so what I was thinking is that like if we cut out some uh, mm. chunk of ADS yeah. uh, above some um, time slice, and then mm. our quantum mechanics, this 1D system now has a kind of time boundary, right? Time boundary. Um... Yeah, what I'm thinking is that uh, can we study like the, the boundary CFT in this code dimensional two holographic setup? Boundary, uh, Sarah, you, you want to uh, put the boundary more here. One more yeah, boundary here. Yeah, the boundary on the, for, for the CFT. So the CFT now is, it has a boundary. It's like to combine this BCFT, ADS, mm -hmm. D plus one with your new proposal, co-dimensional two holography together. I don't know if um... mm, yeah. So so you mean so here we have a, a C, D minus one dimensional conformal view theory, right? Dual. So you want right. to talk about the boundary into you want to put the boundary for this CFT D minus one. Right. So we have uh, a, yeah yeah you, you can introduce boundary. one more one more uh, plane. Right. And then oh. I think you can do this. Uh huh. Uh. So similarly, you introduce one more Q, Q surface. Right, 
like a, a talk note. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, okay. I understand. So then you 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 might want to some co-dimension higher holography, maybe. Right. Yeah, you can get. Yeah, you need. You are right. Yeah, that's the important point. You you can have some more surrounded by more like cone. Then right. you can even co-dimension three and higher. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You are right. You are right. I think probably this kind of calculation works equally. We didn't do this, but I think the similar calculation also works, should work also. Yeah, because there maybe one can consider this boundary entropy again in this co-dimensional two. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I, I see, I see your point. Mm. Holographic set of batteries. Right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. you're right. I, I, I think probably so that way, as you say, the boundary entropy is rep should be reproduced much higher dimensional ideas. Right, right. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I thought you, you might have uh, investigated on that. Uh, no, not, not, not really, actually. Mm. Yeah, that sounds interesting, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I, can I have like one last quick question? Yeah. So do you have any idea what happens if this wedge is not symmetric, if you have from some room uh, okay, minus good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, you can also, you can choose different low star, the low star mm -hmm. and low star prime. And that case, uh, yeah, that case, I think, um, yeah. So, yeah, I think, yeah, you, you get a cinchy low star and plus a cinchy low star prime, for example, in this case, with maybe one half. Plus. Uh, this is a kind of additive contribution. As, uh, as long as our analysis, like central charge and so on, as uh, free energy, as far as we see that, then it's additive. So it will uh, not give you like some CFT on the D minus one or like this co dimension two CFT with left and right central charges different? Ah, uh, you mean chiral? I don't think it's chiral. Mm. Ah, ah, okay, left, uh, you, you mean because originally you have a two boundary and it's coincide. And these two guys are different central charge. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's right. I think, yeah, I think you're right. But uh, in the end, we combine these two into one and they are interacting. So I just talk about, you know, combined central charge only. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. so sure we can decompose these two CFT into two parts. Okay. Right. Right. And this sine high, so the central charge is always larger. This sine hyperbolic gross star is always positive, right? Yeah, 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 that's right. Rho star goes from zero to yeah. something. Right? Oh, rho star should be, I mean, yeah, it's a, that's actually an interesting thing, but uh, I mean, yeah, if we talk about the rho star here, right, and we, we have this one, but you can, you might think, you know, something like, uh, right, I think this configuration. So we, we have some boundary, but maybe, so this is our setup, right? So this is something our setup. But uh, you might think something like this. This one is tilted, but also another one is the same way be tilted, right? Yes. This, I don't know. This is actually interesting, but a bit confusing because in this case, we get a nice positive Newton constant, but second guy is a negative Newton constant. Right? All right. All right. It's much like ghost to gravity. It's, it's, I think it's probably this success that goes to gravity also still makes sense, but uh, I, I'm not so, so much sure. Uh, okay. So that's the reason, actually, yeah, we take over. But, but it's possible that we can put some prime. That is fine. But I uh, want to keep this negative. This is positive. OK, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Then let's thank Tadashi again. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>